Hello and welcome everybody. This is Timo from Paddle FYI and we're in the beautiful We Are Paddle Berlin. We got like five courts here plus a singles court and we're going to review the Swedish startup Two Twos Play Two Racket. This is their more advanced rackets of the two that they have and god damn is it beautiful, huh? What do you think? I think it looks really good, but how does it play on the court? Well, I've been playing with it for about three or four months and that's what we're going to go into today. So today we're going to break our discussion of the play two into price, specs, how it plays on the court, and my final recommendation. So quickly on the price, a disclaimer, they did send this to me for free. After I received a lot of questions from you guys, I thought I would reach out to them and we started a partnership. So regarding the price, I think it's around 180 euros at the time of recording. I've seen it for over 200. You know, paddle racket prices are constantly going up and going down. I think if it's under 200, it's a good deal for this quality of materials and construction. One thing about Tutu, so I think there's a lot of people sharing opinions that are like, you know, they have this beautiful website with like beautiful people playing with the rackets and maybe they're not the best paddle players, but uh, I think from Tutu's perspective, they're trying to figure out what sells the rackets the best and that doesn't really say as much about the quality of the racket. So that's about the price next to the specs. So we'll begin as usual from the bottom of the racket. We have a classic cinching wrist strap, very similar to the head ones, but of course in this uh, fluorescent yellow tennis ball color. Moving up, there's like an interesting indentation on the end cap here, which I, th I think is pretty cool. A slight bulge, not too big, but a slight bulge at the bottom of the handle. It's about 11 centimeter handle, very thin handle. That goes up to this bridge that we have on here, which is an unusual kind of trapezoidal shape. I think it's designed to give, let's say, uh, a bit of rigidity to the bottom of the frame, which I think comes with its own pros and cons, which we'll discuss later when you talk about how it plays. 3K carbon surface, carbon uh, frame, quite, quite rigid. We've got about eight rows and eight columns of drilled holes. Quickly on why the holes on the outside are larger than the holes on the inside. So the, the, the most rigid part of the racket is of course the frame going around the edge here. So as you go into the interior of the racket face, it's going to soften. So the idea is with the larger holes around the edge, you can soften the, the more rigid outer parts to get a more homogeneous kind of response across the racket face. I think it works um, personally. Um, just from, from the feel. And I think this is something that, that racket producers will continue to make. So the interior holes are about nine millimeters and exterior ones are about 14. And we have a bit of roughness. Let me show you the prettier side. It's, it's, I have been playing with it, you see. Not too, not too rough, I would say, but you feel it a little bit, especially on your volleys. We have some little comments and notes, playful things on around the racket. All right, so let's get into how it plays on the court. Let's go. All right, so this racket excels at maneuverability and control on the court. Specifically, my model weighed about 363 grams, but the manufactured stated weight range is 360 grams to 365 grams. It's hard and it has a centered balance. So my model had 26 centimeters of balance. Note that the handle is pretty thin. So you're gonna use at least Oops, one, probably two overgrips. So then bring shape. the balance back to about okay. 25 and a half centimeters. I would recommend that a lot of you may want to counteract that by adding a protector to the top of the racket. From the back of the court, it's super easy to defend with. You have a ton of time. It's super easy to use your wrist to like scoop up balls behind you close to the wall. And it kind of prioritizes control. So the way that I would want to attack with this racket would be to hit a chiquita to the feet of my opponent, following it with a fast put away volley. I also found myself from the left side of the court making these cross court backhand shots with the roughness 
to the to the to the other side uh, of my opponent's fence. But one issue I did notice from the back of the court is if you contact the ball below the center of the racket face, the ball might die a little bit because the sweet spot is not low and the hardness of the racket means that yeah the response is not great outside of the sweet spot. In the middle of the court is where its lightness sort of irritated me. I found my bandejas often landing too shallow. So in order to counteract this, I wound up using my arm more, generating higher swing speeds. But this has other problems because with lighter rackets, I often have issues with timing. I'm, I'm often contacting the ball at the wrong angle and, and winds up shooting the ball into the back wall. The second and maybe more annoying problem is with the sweet spot. And this might be a little bit controversial, but I feel like lighter rackets have smaller sweet spots. In general, the momentum of the racket doesn't power through the ball. And, and if you miss the, the sweet spot slightly on a heavier racket, then it just kind of goes through and you don't notice the vibration as much. With a smaller racket, you really need to, I think I really need to hit the sweet spot quite well. And if you miss that, because you're generating higher swing speeds because your balls are going too shallow, then that might be something that you have an issue with. I also noticed during my aerial game that my wrist was locking a lot more. Because of the vibrations of this racket, uh, I was gripping harder, which then generates more pain for my wrist. So one thing to pay attention to if you have wrist or, or elbow issues. So I enjoy this racket more in ganchos and, and kind of maybe softer shots like this, maybe more precision oriented shots than faster vibras or aggressive bandejas. I know that this is highly based on my personal preferences. Some of you may want much more maneuverable rackets than me and some, some of you may want more aggressive rackets than me. But I just want to highlight the pros and cons of using a lighter racket. There's the sweet spot. Still low. There it is. Still going, huh? Still going. 
All right, so in summary, I recommend this for versatile oriented players, players that are maybe upper intermediate and up. I think more beginner oriented players will struggle with the size of the sweet spot. I think players that are looking at the Knox AT10 line, specifically the harder version of the, the Knoxes, I haven't played the 2024, but last year's 18K, I think this racket reminds me of that one a lot. Slightly aggressive, hard, really easy to maneuver around the court. My biggest complaint with this racket is its short sweet spot. So it's, the sweet spot is actually very wide, um, probably due to the shape of the teardrop, but it's just, it's a bit high and short and I struggled to reach it more than I expected. I also think that the racket is harder than I expected. So I really recommend this for someone who knows that they would like to play with a harder racket. If you're interested in something soft, Tudu also has a softer version. I'll put a link to it up there if I can. I think advanced players looking for something aggressive-ish may feel like it doesn't have that much weight. If you're blocking hard balls, for example, I noticed, yeah, like I was saying, really have to grip it really hard in order to, in order to have the power to make those blocks. And I also want to highlight that Tutu does have a really amazing kind of satisfaction guarantee. I think it's 90 days you can test the racket and it's a very good deal for a racket for this high of quality. I think it's, it's a really, really nice racket. So if these playing characteristics suit you, take a look at the 2-2 Play 2. It's a beautiful racket. They got it in this color and a couple others. Um, Tutu is really doing an interesting thing uh, with Paddle. I, I really appreciate their, their new approach and it feels very fresh compared to some of the other brands that I think have been coming out of Spain and producing rackets for longer. So I hope that we can all kind of grow together and be open-minded about what these new brands are trying to accomplish and experiment and bring more to our sport. That's it for me. Uh, yeah, a couple more uh, bookkeeping items. I'm going to be giving this racket away. I want to, yeah, give back to the community. So if you guys are interested in joining our giveaway, join Team Paddle FYI. Um, I'll ship the racket to you. I don't think we'll have many people joining yet, so I think you've got pretty good chances. I really recommend someone looking for this type of racket. I think you'll like this one a lot. Um, lots of things going on right now. I'm trying to produce more videos. The website's at a bit of a block because of some technical issues that we hope to resolve in a week or two. Um, thank you guys so much for the support. We're getting close to a thousand, so if you've seen more than one video and you are not subscribed yet, you know, Santa is gonna put you on the bad, bad list and you're gonna get, the Tooth Fairy is not gonna come and uh, it's all gonna be rough for you. So you better, you better think about clicking that button, hit the like, drop me a comment saying, Tim, you know, you should probably be healthy every once in a while. I've been sick for like three years now. Um, I hope your guys' winter is going well. I think summer is, the days are getting longer and I think it's gonna be a good summer. Um, it's been a good winter, uh, and thank you so much. I'll have a new video quite soon, actually. There's a few more rackets, so I'll be doing a lot of videos and, uh, lots of newsletters coming up. I think the <clears throat> World Powder Tour is starting in a few weeks. The Hexagon Cup was now. We gotta, gotta keep on paying attention to what these pros are doing. I'm very curious to see how 2024 comes out. I feel like it's totally open. Nobody's got injuries, as far as I know. Um, we got this new brand. I'm really gonna try to get my hands on some of those lock rackets. That's enough rambling. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Uh, cheers.